Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I want to start with a question. I've already gone hiking today, as you just saw, through a very dense woods. But how many of you like to hike? Anybody nod on head? Generally, I see some hands. Good, good, yeah. So Heidi and I are not alone. We love to hike. We love to walk. We like a little bit of climb, not a lot. We like to be outside in God's creation, to just walk around and absorb what he has made, to get away from the sound of cars and lawnmowers and buildings and roads. We kind of like the solitude. Well, I'd like to offer to you a metaphor today as we go through what Jesus is talking about in Scripture. And I hope that this metaphor will help explain our relationship to one another, but also our relationship as a group of people, a part of Christ's global church. The metaphor, if you couldn't guess, is about hiking. So if you aren't much of a hiker, I brought some pictures and, and use your imagination. The kids imagined fairly well. I think we can all do it together. Oh. Dan, would you please take me to the first slide of this, sir? It's not Tyson with a clicker if it doesn't work right the first time. It's not in there. You know, I did this, and the computer sometimes does that. Would you look for it, please? Either way, now you're really going to use your imagination, okay? So now we're going to paint word pictures until the real pictures come up. You're awesome. Okay, imagination's gone again. We'll get through this together. All right. So Heidi and I were walking here in this remote place, and we noticed that our trail, as you can kind of see through the middle, it's pretty visible. Despite all the trees and the shadows, we knew exactly where we were going. There was no risk of getting lost unless you left the path. We could turn around or do a 360, and either way, if we knew we'd end up somewhere that someone had been. We could see the path. There were no weeds. The underbrush is gone. There aren't any big stones or sticks in the way. If you were to go to any state park or any well-maintained park, you'll notice something similar. And you'll notice that the closer you are to the parking lot or the campground, the nicer the trails are. The further away that you get, well, the more covered and underbrush they get. The reason, and what amazed me as I was on the trail, is that no one actually had to go out with a weed spray like me at home and actually spray the trail to keep the weeds off. And yeah, I'm sure there's the occasional big stick, but someone's not going around and removing all of the sticks and stones. That trail is maintained just by feet. Simply by walking on the trail and having thousands of feet before me, the trail was kept clear by everyone following it. We weren't trailblazers that day. Many, many people had been on this path. They had stepped on it. They had ground the dirt. They had kicked the stones and the sticks, and they had squashed any weeds with their feet. It's not a job that one person could do together, but by everyone walking on the path in the same way, we had a trail. It was a really nice trail. Think about it. This is why we call trails well-worn. It's literally worn by the soles of our feet. It's maintained by many people. This is why a path like this one is almost impossible to see. It's not used, it's not maintained. It's hard to see the path because no one else is on it. Well, here's the metaphor that I promised. Here, here's why I'm telling you about hiking, other than I just love hiking. In our gospel reading, Jesus said something that, that is familiar to many of us, right? He called himself the way, the truth, and life. His disciples had asked him, where are you going? How, how do we get there? You're said you're going to the Father, and you told me I know how to get there, but I don't. Jesus, how do I get to the Father? And Jesus answers them by saying, I am the way to the Father. I am the only path because I am truth, and I am life. We take that same path and use it, like I said, for our metaphor. Every person in this world is going through life, and if we think of life as a forest, well, there are many ways to get through a forest, aren't there? 
But there's one way that Jesus has taken us. We're going to call it the path of Jesus. He did call himself the way. And every day, we as Christians move further and further down that path, always waiting and continuing on towards the goal. And the goal is to be with Jesus and the Father in eternal life with him forever. When we wake up in the morning, we are on this path to the cross. When we go to sleep, we're on the path. Every moment, we continue on this path of life. And because we are baptized disciples of God, we're heading on the path that Jesus has laid for us. But life can be like a forest. Sometimes the path can become abundantly unclear. Sometimes it has all manner of things strewn in front of it, blocking the path, making it hard to see what's important. For us Christians, there can be so many things that block our vision at the end of the path and make it hard to see where we are going as we follow Jesus. But we do not follow Jesus alone. Just as we had a couple helpers move the trees out of the way, just as many, many people have tread that path, we don't follow Jesus alone. Every single one of you is walking on the path with everyone else in here, but it's not limited to just that. See, it occurred to me that that trail in the forest, that had been there long before I was born. For many, many, many years and decades, people have been walking the same path, treading it, beating it down for the next person and the next person, until eventually I came along and did my part. It's the same way with the Christian faith. We didn't just arrive here in this building today on our own. No, there were people before us. And, and often we look to the big flashy names. So we'll start there, right? We're Lutheran Church of the Lake, so let's look at Martin Luther. 500 years ago, he walked the path and followed Jesus, and his footsteps helped pave our way. But we can go older than that. 2,000 years ago, the apostles themselves walked the path of faith. They laid down the teachings, and they helped make our path to Jesus. Those are the big names. But this is something every person, especially us who aren't going to be in any history books, are a part of. You are walking on the path, which means that you are helping form the path of faith towards Jesus for everyone after you. That means by being here today, we are helping trample this path down to make it clear cut for the next people. We tread even the same steps of people, and I know some of you are still here, who came together who started this church, who built the building, and who got us here today. Our walk of faith is built on the walk of faith of many, many others. They collectively have made our path to Jesus that much easier. These people, some of them have taught us the faith. They've taken us to church or, or Bible study. They, they've opened up, they've talked about their faith to us. And in doing so, they've made the path of Jesus a little clearer. It's just like what the writer of Ecclesiastes says. He writes that two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him when he falls and he has no one else to lift him up. If you've been hiking, you know the general rule of thumb and the wisdom is don't go hiking alone. Even if it's a well-tread trail like this one, the risk goes so much higher the moment you are alone because you might fall and get hurt. You might become invisible even from the path. If you fall into underbrush, you risk pain, exposure, or even death. It happens a lot out west where people get separated from the group. They don't make it home. Same goes for every disciple. As we walk on the path of Jesus Christ, as we follow in his way towards life, we need other people to be there with us. We need a team, we need a group, a family, a church. Now let's turn back once more to our metaphor. Well, Heidi and I hiked, we eventually got out of the nice part and ended up in a swamp. And we were super happy that we found that. That is a raised 
path, and the way it was made was someone went out and cut down some trees and took the, the stumps, the logs, and then set tree and lumber on top and nailed it all together for half a mile so that we could walk through the swamp as if we were on dry land. They didn't need, they didn't need Moses. They just did a lot of work. Because, see, these swamps were up and down some hills, miles away from anything that could be called civilization. Someone had gone through all the work of lugging up the lumber, taking it to the place, getting it in the muck, cutting down the trees, putting it all together, so that when I show up on my vacation, I can act like everything's just fine, without a piece of sweat coming off me. This is a case where simply walking on the path doesn't maintain the path anymore. You can walk through mud and swamp all you like, but it's just going to fill back up with water. So someone had to do something more. Some effort was needed. And they did so. Someone went out there and did the hard work with their skills and their sweat and did a lot of money hard, back-breaking work for my sake. I want you to again then think of the life of a Christian. Think of your life. Yes, we are walking on the same path day after day. We're following in the way that is Jesus Christ that arrives at eternal life with God. But sometimes as we go through life, or as we see other people's lives, it takes something more. It takes more than just a simple witness, a simple act of worship like we are in now. Sometimes it takes a hero. And so, yes, we have these big names, don't we? These heroes of the faith. Yeah, Martin Luther, we have all the apostles. There's St. Paul on his missionary journeys, ending with his death. What a hero. But what about the regular people like us? We're part of this, too. There are many daily, daily examples of this kind of path-making where Christians take some time. Where they take some of their money, some of their heart and soul, and they give it to the path of Jesus for someone else. So that the next person to follow towards Jesus would have an easier time. So to all of you here who serve and volunteer in our ministries, even when it isn't convenient and especially when it isn't easy, you are building the path for someone else at an expense to yourself. For all of you, my brothers and sisters, who give up your time for this place, some of you to teach our younger Christians about their Lord. For all of you who so diligently pray and uplift me and so many others in this place, you are adding, you are reinforcing, and you are strengthening the path to Jesus with your effort. And the amazing thing is, is that all of this effort, all of the effect on the path is not done for your sake. You're doing it, whether you know it or not, to help the next traveler. I'm sure the guy that built this raised path walked on it. I would test it out at least. But ultimately it was for me. And how many other people, some year later, to walk on, and he or she did it at their own expense. We do it for the next person. We give now for the future. Let's turn back once more to our metaphor, to the story. Turns out in the middle of the swamp, there was a river. And when we got to the river, I saw it on the map, I didn't know what was going to happen. Because it's really, there's not a lot of people out here. And I thought, Heidi and I didn't bring our bathing suits. And the water's 45 degrees. So I ain't swimming. So we were truly impressed and thankful for when we found we found a bridge. And boy, was that bridge helpful. It kept me dry. But then it hit me. Out here in the middle of the land that is owned only by moose, someone did that work. Not only did they have to build a raised path, now they have to bring the wood out here. They have to somehow get in the river and set the base for this thing so it didn't wobble. They had to build the bridge, and then they had to keep going. I'm pretty sure that can only be done by a team. I can't imagine one person doing all of this 
And it's, you know, higher than my head out of the water. This thing is big. It's substantial. So some team or group came, and they did something amazing. Something that enabled so many people to get to the mountain on the other side of those trees. This project took time. This project took resources, it took sweat, and it took a group of people doing it together to make it happen. Now think again of the Church of Christ. There is one global church, but we also use Little C Church, right? Church, like Church of the Lakes. Bunch of us right here together. And we travel the path of faith alone, but also with our brothers and sisters there to help us, and that is good. But what does it mean for us to make a bridge? What does it look like when we come together to do the big, extremely tough, and incredibly impactful thing together? This is why we, partly why we have churches and congregations in the first place, is that we have one another. We're not doing this alone. We can team up and do something amazing. Sure, one person, just by walking their faith, helps. That same person can dedicate some effort, but imagine what happens when a group does it together. Imagine what a family of believers can do to make the path of Jesus easier for many others. What sort of thing can a group of believers do when we join together? What does a bridge look like when we find the people in this world who are finding it hardest to get through the woods of faith? Who have lost sight of Jesus or never even glimpsed him in the first place? What does it mean for us to enter into their hard life, their challenging life, and to say, let us help you get to Jesus? Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth, and Jesus is life. And Jesus has given us the path of life to walk. Like I said, today we, we've been using it a while internally, but today we were excited to share with you uh, our mission statement, uh, LCOL. It was crafted by the council in the room right over there. Their eyes were looking to Jesus just as their hearts and ears thought of you and this place and their family, their friends. And it is this. We at LCOL make disciples by caring and growing in Christ together. This is admitting that we as one, we walk in faith. We learn about Jesus and we grow in faith. We mature as Christians. So that as we walk on the path to Jesus, we're helping the next one. By doing so, our feet tread a path of ever-growing faith. But Jesus has also given us a path to improve, and sometimes effort is needed. So as we walk, we go where we need it. We care for people, and we enter into their lives to bless them. Then also there's that really important word at the end. Together. Sure, I have that word, and I'm so glad you did. Because together we can do such incredible things as we work with our brothers and sisters to help our future brothers and sisters make it to Jesus and eternal life with Him. So I ask you, over the next year, as we kick off this idea, what has God given to you to do to walk the path of life? How will you grow your faith? Over the next year, how will God use you to make this path of life neater and easier for someone else at the expense of your energy? How will you give up yourself? And over the next year, how is God leading us, the congregation, the members of LCOL as one, to work for the good of so many people who follow Jesus? What incredible thing are we going to do that when people see it, they can't help but be excited to find out more? God has given you faith. He's given you forgiveness. He's given you a church. And most importantly, God loves you. May we never take this blessing for granted. But do let us take these undeserved gifts of God and use them to nourish the faith and lives of even more people. Then not only would we end up in eternal life with Jesus forever, but that the people coming after us would too. Amen.